Hello everyone, this is Anna. I'm the host of the Dunkelgrün podcast. I am a knitter and a fiberholic and I am also a chemist, so I like to throw in a little bit of chemical information here and there into the world of wool and fibers. And today's little clip is gonna be about washing wool. So in this segment I'm also going to answer two questions which I have received over the last couple of months. One is about uh, fabric conditioners or hair conditioners and wool and the other one is on the subject of crocking and acidic pH of hands. So recently I have heard from a lot of people that they are using uh, solid bars of wool wash and as you know I have also started to make my own soap bars like this one here which is a soap bar containing lanolin and um, when I gave them out to some of my friends at Edinburgh Yarn Festival uh, people said to me oh I can't wait to wash my wool or my socks or something with this and I did a little bit of research I have actually not washed my knits yet with one of my soaps for one reason. In my opinion and to my knowledge, solid bars of soap or of this kind of handmade soap that is a sodium-based um, soap made with sodium hydroxide, um, I think that this is not the best thing to wash your wool because um, water typically contains calcium carbonate which is also known as limestone in English or kalk in German and this, um, calcium, these calcium salts are present in almost any water that you get. In some areas you have a bit more and in some areas you have a bit less. Like if you live close to the mountains and you get spring water from the mountains, you have very likely a more hard water than people who live close to the sea. And they have um, soft water, which means they have less calcium in the water. And... Um, Anyways, even the soft water contains some calcium. If you would want to have calcium-free water, you would need to boil it or you could use rainwater also, then this is almost calcium-free. But if the so water contains calcium and you um, put some natural soap, handmade soap into it that was made with sodium hydroxide, then um, it is going to precipitate as calcium salts and those are insoluble and you might know that in the bathroom when you uh, don't clean your your bathtub for a while or your shower there is this kind of soap slur that is formed this insoluble stuff that is a bit difficult to clean or you need to use a good detergent to get rid of it and the way you could dissolve that is with uh, acid so with some vinegar or citric acid or an acidic cleaner you can get rid of that and what happens if you wash wool or also your hair there is actually quite a bit of information online about using um, solid bars for shampoo um, that this precipitate of the calcium salt is going to cover your fiber your hair or your wool or your knitting and it's gonna make it look dull one time probably won't make any difference but if you do it more and more it will make it dull and it will cover it and it will not um, you will kind of lose the nice properties of your material or of your hair and a thing that you can do to avoid that is after you have washed it with your solid bar of soap you give it an acidic rinse like with citric acid or with vinegar so I had the idea, but that was not very well thought through, to put some uh, citric acid crystals into a solid bar of soap because then I thought this might get rid of the problem. But I was not thinking very far because if you add acid to a soap directly, you revert the process of soap making. So you kind of destroy the soap and you create um, the oils. And this is also not something I would want. I would not want to have the free oils that are in this soap present on my wool. So for me, 
It typically means that I wash my wool with liquid soap and not with a solid soap and I'm going to show you the products that I like using. So the wool wash that I like to use, and I am not endorsed here, I am not paid to say this, it is just um, a wool wash which I have purchased and I like to use, and that is by Unicorn, and it's called Unicorn Fiber Wash. So this is what I basically use to wash all my knitwear, and I am really happy with it. It has a very gentle lavender scent, it's really not strong at all, and um, it washes the wool really well, and it comes in a very nice large um, bottle with this thing here at the top. And of this brand there are also two other products. This one is the Fiber Rinse, and this is a fiber conditioner which is specially for wool and silk and um, protein fibers. And this is um, especially good for keeping the natural electrostatic properties of the fi protein fibers. So I also really like this, but I don't use it as much as I use the fiber wash because not all of the yarns need this. It is also a very good softener if um, you have a scratchy fiber that you would like to wear at your neck or something. This is very nice to soften it and it is specifically formulated for wool. So I think it's really nice. And the third product, which is sold by this unicorn company, is the Power Score. And this one is designed for washing raw fleeces. You can see it has this cute little sheep here. Um, so with this one you can scour and wash raw fleeces, but I also like it when I have heavy stains in uh, wool. Uh, I don't have that so often, I have actually never used it on any of my knitwear. I suppose it's quite nice when you have a baby who might uh, spit or make your, your clothes dirty with things. Um, I have used it on a piece of lamb fur, which uh, belongs to my friend who is expecting a baby and she bought a used uh, piece of lamb fur to cover her uh, baby car. And this was a bit dirty from the shoes of that baby, it was a bit larger baby already. And um, so I washed that with this power scour or power score, I don't know, power scour probably. And I was really satisfied with how the stains went out really well and it did not make the wool dry or anything. I think it's a really nice product. So super cool. I recommend it if you have heavy stains in your wool or in your knits. There is also this product uh, by Tuft Woolens that was recently gifted to me by my dear friend Christy and I love the smell of this. And this is sold as a sock soap and I have heard also of many people who are using this and who are quite happy with it but also this product goes under the category of a solid soap and I would rather use that on my body to wash my skin but not so much for washing my knitting. So I have received a question in the Ravelry group about using uh, fabric conditioners or also hair conditioner for the conditioning of knitting fibers. Many of you might have heard or read already that it is not recommended to use fabric conditioner on wool products because it's not good. Usually there is not much of an explanation, so I would like to give some thoughts um, to that uh, kind of product and why it might be not so good to use uh, fabric conditioners or even hair conditioners on your knitting. Conditioners and fabric softeners typically contain cationic surfactants and those are often quaternary ammonium salts. And this sounds now very complicated. What do those compounds do? They basically form a layer around your fiber. And this can be a good or a bad thing. There is a giant variety of different kinds of cationic surfactants on the market and it would be impossible for me to go into detailed information about even just a couple of them. But usually the products that you buy, if it's fabric conditioner for cotton or if it's hair conditioner for your hair, is tailored for the kind of fiber that it is marketed at. So a hair conditioner won't be that good at conditioning your cotton and a fabric softener might be not something you want to use on your scalp and on your hair. And so how is it now with wool? 
So as we all know, wool has some very nice natural properties, like for example, it is very nicely water repellent. I have created this little clip here to show you what happens when you put some drops of water on some natural non-superwash wool and you can see how the wool really repels the water and it's almost like one of those high-tech nano materials that um, repel water drops and you can move the water around on it. And even superwash wool, which is the second swatch that I made, uh, does a little bit of this water repelling. It isn't quite strong for the fact that it is superwash wool, but it uh, is a little bit less than with non-superwash wool. At some point the superwash wool is going to start soaking up the water. So these are properties of wool that we like and there are many more as you probably know and if you add something on the surface of the wool you can only imagine that it is going to change the properties of the wool. So a quaternary ammonium salt or a cationic surfactant is going to attach to the surface of the wool and change its structure and how it belong, uh, behaves towards other um, materials like water or soap or your sweat of your body or your skin also. So it can be a good thing, it can make the wool softer and wearable and it can also be a bad thing because it can cause the sweat not to be transported so much anymore. Actually I did a little bit of reading about uh, fabric softeners and I found out that it is really not so good to use those even on your cotton towels or something like that because they create this layer that uh, is insoluble after some washes with fabric softener the uh, layer is going to stay there and it will take really a long um, time and several washes to get rid of it again and what it does is even it changes the way that towels, for example, can take up humidity. So if there is a thick layer of fabric softener, you also need more detergent to wash your towels or your clothes in the end. And also they are not so good for the environment if they go down in the wastewater. So actually, since I have started reading about fabric softeners, I was using them before on my laundry days, but I have stopped doing that. And I actually really like my clothes a lot more now that they don't have softener. It it takes a little bit of getting used to it because um, my clothes usually come out quite stiff when I don't use softener but I actually prefer it after some time because the, the properties of the fabric are more natural. So how is it with hair conditioner? I suppose that with hair conditioner there is also a huge variety of different uh, products available on the market. That are, there are some that contain silicones, some that are silicone free, some that are very natural. There are really a lot of different products and I guess it really really depends which product you're using and what effect you are looking for. So in the end I can only recommend you to test it, make a little swatch, wash it with your hair conditioner and see if you like it or not. Um, but maybe uh, be careful with it and be aware that it can change the properties of your knitting and maybe you prefer the natural way of your yarn. There are of course also products like this Fiber Rinse by Unicorn which are fab formulated exactly for wool. If I would want to use a conditioner on my knitting I would prefer something like that because this is actually engineered and uh, formulated for knitting and for wool and silk and, and all kinds of protein fibers. So one question that I have received that fits a bit into this topic of washing uh, yarns is about crocking and this question was sent to me by Celeste from the Yarn to Table podcast and she wanted to know because she heard something about acidic skin pH and that it can um, cause yarn dye that is in the, dye, in the yarn already to stain off to the fingers and also that it can break the nickel plating of knitting needles. So crocking is generally a process where um, dye molecules which are not fixed to the wool come out of the wool. And this can is typically known to happen with indigo because indigo dyeing does not really chemically attach the indigo dye to the wool. It just um, is an insoluble compound that is kind of 
caught in the wool but it's not chemically attached to it so if you knit with it it is going to stain off on your fingers if you rub it against other surfaces it is going to come off you're going to turn other things blue and this is what we call crocking and this can also happen with other dyes like acid dyes and you can also see it when you wash dyed wool um, in the in the water and the water turns colored so typically um, this happens with acid dyes only if you have very, very saturated colors. So there are many indie dyers who have this problem that they sell their dyed yarns and then people knit with them and it stains their fingers and they wash the yarn and dye comes off and they knit different colors together like a dark color and a light color and then the yarn, the dye bleeds from the dark yarn to the lighter yarn and this can be really annoying. And um, it is not the indie dyer's fault. I have heard a couple of theories for this, especially like um, when people knit with yarn that it should uh, be the acidic pH of our skin that causes the dye to come off. And this is for me a little bit difficult to rationalize or to understand. I don't think that this is actually the case. Our skin is in fact slightly acidic. It has um, a, a pH lower than seven but it is not as that acidic that it could break compounds like acid dyes. What is much more likely to happen is that you have unfixed uh, dye in the, in the yarn because you dyed a very dark colorway or a very intense saturated color. And even when you wash it, it is going, the water is going to run clear and it looks all fine, you're going to dry it. And then when you rewind it, you bring different parts of the yarn of the fibers to the surface and the same thing happens again when you knit it. So after some time, after some rearrangement of the fiber, after some handling of the stuff, you bring parts to the surface that have not been exposed to the water before and the eye is going to come off. And in my opinion, there is nothing that indie dyers can do about that. It's just something that we have to be aware of. If you are buying indie dyed yarn that is um, super dark and you want to pair it with some light yarn, you have to wash it before you combine those two colors. You have to maybe wash it several times yourself before you do that. And otherwise, um, the wearing off on your, on your skin should usually not be a big problem. It is just a very small amount of dye that is coming off there. And if you are allergic, you maybe should be careful and maybe avoid those kinds of yarns that are very dark but I think in general it should not be a big health problem. And now we have touched already a little bit on the subject of acidic sweat. And I said already that our skin pH in fact is slightly acidic. And there are also people who naturally have a bit more acidic sweat than others. And this can actually really cause the metal, the nickel plating on metal needles to wear off over time or depending on the acidity of your sweat, even it can happen a lot faster. It is a phenomenon that is quite well known, I think, among guitar players because like professional guitar players or bass players or people with other, who play other instruments with metal strings, um, it can happen that this nickel plating on the strings can wear off from being touched by the sweat on the fingers and this is also something you cannot do much about it you can clean your knitting needles right after you knit it with them or use a little slightly basic ph detergent to um, clean your knitting needles afterwards so that the acid cannot sit there and eat itself into the metal um, otherwise unfortunately maybe try to eat less acidic food i don't really know maybe ask your doctor if there's something you can do about that uh, acidic sweat that you have. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about that subject, but it is, um, in my chemical opinion, a reasonable thing that can happen because the nickel plating is acid sensitive on uh, knitting needles or also on guitar strings. So I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions regarding that subject, you can always and, uh, ask them here in the comments on YouTube or also check out our Ravelry group at Ravelry.com. It's the Dunkelgrün group and there we chat a lot about different subjects and you can feel free to ask your questions there.